，马斯林尤其的居民，你们好。哇，很紧张啊！就 ，This is my first time taking part in an election. So if I make any boo boos, I hope you forgive me. All right, all right. As、uh, the two MCs have very kindly introduced me, my name is Wong Su Yi, and I'm a lecturer、uh, in English language at the National University of Singapore. I've been with the STP for 20 years, so I'm no fly by night、uh, politician. And today, there are two things that I would like to talk to you about. First, if you go to the Parliament of Singapore website, you will find there a definition of the function of Parliament. Now, what does Parliament do, or what does an MP do? The function of Parliament, or the role of an MP, is to make laws. And to take up a critical role to check on the actions of the governing party and the ministries. Listen to these words carefully: to check on the actions of the governing party and the ministries. Now, those of you who are familiar with what goes on in Parliament will know that the PAP has something called the Party Whip, Pienna. The party whip means that when it's time to cast their vote in parliament, or for against, or for or against a law or a bill to be passed, unless this party whip is lifted, PAP MPs have no choice but do what their leader tells them to do. In other words, they must vote for the bill. Even if they are against the bill, even if they are voting against their conscience, they have to follow the party line. So, with the party whip in place, do you think that the PAP MPs can do this role of checking on the actions of the government? Thank you. And can you remember how many times have? The has the party whip been lifted in Parliament? All right. Yes, yes, you are right. The answer is not many. What I do know is that the PAP party whip was not lifted in 1984 when they proposed the CPF minimum sum to lock up your savings. And the party whip was not lifted in 1994 when they introduced the GST. And two years ago, in 2013, the party whip was also not lifted when they want to increase the population of to 6.9 million people by 2030.、Mm. So I think you can safely count with one hand the number of times this party whip has been lifted. But Even if the party whip is lifted, do you think the PAP MPs have the courage to vote against their party? No. Back in 2002, do you know that Tan Su Kun, who was a former Speaker of Parliament, he said when Go Chok Tong toyed with the idea of lifting the whip, in response to Go Chok Tong's idea of lifting the party whip, Tan Su Kun said. So, what's new? I still have to get permission to disagree. Thank you. So, so now let me ask you: with the existence of the party whip, and with only seven opposition MPs out of a total of 87 seats, can Parliament fulfil this role of checking on the actions of the governing party and the ministries? As it now exists, what we have is a lopsided parliament, a dysfunctional parliament, in which laws are passed without any meaningful debate or challenge. Therefore, what we need in parliament is obvious. We yes, that's my next line. We need 
need more opposition voices in parliament precisely because PAP MPs are not able to perform this important role that is required of all MPs. Now, just to conclude on my first point, when I say that we need more opposition MPs, we don't just need a few more. Even having one third opposition is not enough because that applies only to making changes to the constitution. In other words, if the government wants to change the constitution, yes, they need one third, uh, they need two thirds majority. But if they want to increase GST, if they want to increase CPF minimum sum, or to extend the age of withdrawal of our CPF money, all they need is 50% simple majority, and the law will be passed. So friends, friends of Muslim UT, having a few more opposition MPs is not enough. We need a lot more opposition members in parliament. So that brings me to my second point tonight. At the SDP, we aspire to be more than just a check on the governing party and the ministries. Since the last elections, we have launched 10 policy papers in national issues such as healthcare, economy, education, housing, population, and cost of living. These policies are the concrete plans of how we think Singapore can and should be governed. These are policies that we will propose in Parliament. These are policies that are designed to make Singapore into a happy and inclusive society, and not just a society in which we become slaves to the GDP without caring for each other. Without, whether, we are, whether we are permanent residents, migrant workers, or living below, or at the age of poverty line, now, in all these policies, there are two principles, I emphasize two principles, which are sorely lacking in the present government. The two principles are, one, accountability, and second, transparency. These two principles are, of course, related. You know, when the late Mr. Ong Teng Chong, our, exec our first executive president, the first thing he did was to ask, how much money is there in our Singapore reserves? And do you know the famous reply he got? Yes, the reply he got was, it would take 56 man years to produce a dollar and cent value of our national reserves. Now, where is the proper accounting? Now, if the government does not even have proper accounting of how much it has, how then can it have the integrity to ask every citizen to account for the income and the assets every financial year? Now, more recently, you have also heard that the Auditor General, the AG, has found numerous incidents in which the government ministries and state boards, including the People's Association... Now, these government state boards, and particularly the People's Association, the PA, they have failed to comply with proper financial rules. But Minister Lim Sui say, what did, what did Minister Lim say? He said, he said, these lapses are committed with good intentions. Yeah. Now, that is not what accountability means. Yeah. That is giving excuses. Uh, 
Accountability means taking responsibility. It means that when rules and procedures are not followed, we must have an independent inquiry to find out what has gone wrong. And I stress the word independent inquiry, not just people appointed by themselves to check on themselves. Now, if a law professor can be brought to court for accepting gifts of just over a thousand dollars, then I think we have some, we have to do something more than just coming up with the excuse of good intentions. When the amount of money involved in the AG report is over $20 million. Finally, transparency. Now, thank you. So I finished with account, accountability. Now, transparency. What does transparency mean? Transparency means providing information, sharing information so that the public can make informed decisions as to how things are run in Singapore. Does the Singapore public, that, do you have access to such information? Do we know how much, how the money in Tamasic Holdings and in GIC is being used? Is that proper accounting? Let me also give you a recent example of the, let me also give you an example of the population white paper. Most of you know that the population white paper projects a figure of 6.9 million by 2030. But what they don't tell you is that by 2050, this figure will rise to over 10 million. 10 million. What would a population of 10 million mean in a small country like Singapore? When are we, when we are already facing serious infrastructural problems in transport and housing? Therefore, friends and residents of Masling UT, vote for the SDP so that we can be your voice in parliament. When we are in parliament, we will push for accountability and transparency. Vote for the SDP. Thank you.